What's cracking everybody? Merry Christmas. Jay from SVG Edition here. Got a Super Nintendo that I got off of eBay as non-working. I tested it. It does not seem to power on. Fortunately, these uh, Super Nintendo uh, Juniors don't have any sort of power indicator on them. So we're actually going to mod that and do that today. Uh, it looks like somebody's been in this before because this screw right here isn't all the way down. I'm going to have to take this all out anyway just because of this uh, shell needs an extreme clean. So I'm going to soak in some hot soapy water for a little bit and get to scrubbing. It's not even the right screw. Whatever. So I don't, uh, I don't see a whole lot of people talk about repairing these. So usually the issue is going to be this little fuse. I'm gonna to have to take this heat shielding off so I can show you. So unlike the regular Super Nintendo version one model, the fuse is not one of those little tubular fuses. It's a surface mount fuse, it's this thing right here. We're gonna test that for continuity and see if we get anything. And if not, Oh, snap. Okay. Well, that's good, I think. Other options here. We'll check to see if you've got any corrosion or whatever under here. Not too bad. The cart connector looks pretty, uh, pretty disgusting. And if you can actually look inside we can zoom this in while it's shaking. There's quite a bit of crud in there. And that might be the issue. Sorry, you can't see what I'm doing, can you? Well, let's, let's get all this stuff out. Focus the camera. I don't know if you saw that. There was like tissue paper or something in there. Do more over here. So it might just need to be cleaned. So I'm going to plug this in. I'm just going to see if I'm getting voltage too. So we're going to go ahead and turn this bad boy on, flip it over, and see, this is your voltage regulator. Let's see if we get anything on there. Uh, oh, you can't see because I'm zooming way in. All right, so here we go. I really do suck at this. All right, so we got our voltage regular pins here. Let's see if we get anything. No. And no. So that's interesting. We get nothing. I wonder if the switch might be not working. Let's try that real quick. Let's see. 
All right. Go well, unplug it. Uh, let's see. I think. Let's see. So that's sorted. That's sorted. We turn it on. Yeah, so that's working. Is there any voltage coming in? Let's unplug this again. So I think this, the large pin is the ground, if I'm correct. Maybe, nope, small one. All right, back to voltage. Turn this bad boy on, which it already is, and just see if we get anything here and we do oh it's fluctuating hold on we get 9 volts coming in so there's 9 volts coming in where else is it where's it going anywhere let's see getting nine volts there we get nine volts there to the via come back up on the other side is this getting nine volts it is getting nine volts at the fuse so what i'm seeing is there the voltage regular might be bad let's change that out let's let's see all right so i've got a little update on this here super nintendo could not figure out what the issue was. Uh, I replaced that little component right there. No, uh, no change. That actually gets voltage. I didn't. I don't remember if I checked the the other one uh, before I replaced it. But I took off the reset button, thinking that it might be permanently pushed down or making connection like it's hitting reset or stuck on reset. Didn't do anything, but I did notice quite a bit of corrosion under that button. And I'm looking on the edges here. I definitely see that someone spill on here. Uh, at some point and then taking a plastic shell and cleaning that definitely some sort of soda or something like that spilling in here but looking underneath the power switch which I also removed after seeing that corrosion there was a lot of corrosion on the little terminals here and the four um, posts here those are all ground this one I believe one of these two um, deals with the voltage and there was no um, no ring there and it wasn't making any contact with this rail so I'm gonna go ahead and try to bridge that with some solder maybe a small piece of wire re-solder everything up and see if that actually fixes the problem all right folks we're all done here so my UV light kind of crapped out on me and um, the solder mask didn't completely harden I gotta figure that out because um, that kind of looks like shit um, but the important thing is we actually have voltage going to the voltage regulator now so that seemed to be the problem it was just a broken track underneath the switch itself so let's take this over to the tv and see if it actually runs a game all right let's try this out with my favorite testing game super street fighter 2 oh shit it is on there we go nice Make sure it displays graphics properly like it's supposed to. Everything looks good so far. Shit, I'm satisfied with that. 
All right, so I've got this thing pretty much wrapped up and ready to roll. We can see that that um, side of the mask is dried up and becomes solid, which is good. Another thing that I did is I set this up for an LED light. Basically, I have this is coming straight from the voltage regulator, so the base or the ground is the middle. And when you're looking at it from this angle, the far right is your five volt output. So it's on a breakaway cable, and I just prefer doing it that way in case. I or somebody else ever has to open it up, I don't have to desolder or anything to worry about ripping wires out. So, this will go back here. I'm trying to do this with one hand, I should probably just set the camera up, make my life a little easier. So, if you have the wire coming out back behind the cart slot, there's a lot of give. It doesn't press down directly on the plastic, so you're not going to stress that wire. We'll go ahead and put the shielding back on first. All right, so looks pretty good. Obviously, this has a little bit of um, tarnish to it. Not really a whole lot we can do about that. On the shell side, this is where I put the LED. I put it right where this on um, marking is. I just think it looks nice there. I know there's a lot of folks that want to do underneath the button. That's just my preference right there. So a little bit of hot glue king in there, that's all right. There's other ways to do that. Um, you can get some plastic and use your soldering iron to kind of mold plastic around it. And that sometimes actually looks nicer, but just for the sake of what I'm doing right now, uh, I decided to go with glue, hot glue. And this thing was extremely filthy when I got it also. I want to mention that there's all kinds of gunk and dirt that just does not want to come off. Ugh. So we'll make sure we connect this before we assemble. So we got that all hooked up. It took way longer and more effort than I think it should have. And we're going to make sure that this wire, pull this out, this wire right here wraps around the post here while you're putting this in. And it's as simple as that. Good to go. All right, there's burn marks or something on there too. Not really a whole lot I can do about that. So I'm gonna go ahead and button this up because I know it's good to go. And then I will show you it working. All right, we're back. So what I was saying was that this button, the reset button, I didn't even notice it was jacked up until I opened it up uh, because I tried to you know, test the buttons and all that before um, actually screwing everything in. And I noticed that the button was just basically broken uh, in half. So I had to find a fix for that. And that was interesting, but unfortunately, like I said, I didn't record it. Anyway, moving on to the Super Nintendo that I just did. We'll turn that on. And we'll turn the sound on. Just make sure the controller works. Seems good so far. Pick somebody I can use with one hand, like uh, Honda. Turn that off. I'll do a little bit of extra cleaning on the outside because there's still some residual gunk. So I got those two done. I got this done here. And then I also have a Model 1 Sega Genesis that I got in a box full of crap. And I, I had this for weeks already. And I didn't touch it until today or decided to mess with any of the systems or anything in there until today. Opened up the Sega Genesis and um, it had spiders in it. Not dead ones, live spiders. It was disgusting. So... I threw everything back in the box after I saw that. Cleaned that one up, but I took everything back in the box and I threw some uh, bug spray all up in there. And I'm gonna let that, you know, kind of just gestate for the entire night. And if there's anything else in there, hopefully it kills it. But this is why <laughs> it's kind of a gamble buying this stuff on eBay. You never know what you're gonna get. And this stuff looked particularly dirty. 
Um, and I'm not really too um, keen on having bugs on the inside, but if they're dead, that's one thing. If they're alive, that's something totally different. So I may show you some of the other stuff that's in that box, but I got a pretty solid deal on it. It was like 130 bucks for a Genesis 1, an NES, a Nintendo 64, uh, and a PS2, and a bunch of games and stuff too. So it wasn't bad, but it's just going to need a lot of extra care, and I don't want to like open stuff like this up in the house because I don't want bugs in my house. Anyway, back to what we're doing here. Also, what else did I do? I got a couple of Turbo Graphics boards. One, I'll show you what I got going on here. I have one that I fixed. The um, when I got it, the controller port was all broken off in the front. So when I pulled it out, that's when I I noticed there was a problem. Um, it was very very loose, and I tried to put another controller in. It went in, but it was very difficult difficult to get in. Tested it out, no response. It turns out that this entire piece right here was cracked right along these little blue, whatever those components are. So I had to, glue, and this is not the one I did, but so I had to glue everything back with epoxy, like right across here, and then glue or uh, solder these joints here to the corresponding joints here. So that didn't turn out too bad. This one is something kind of similar. It was a no power issue, and I don't know if I did this because I might have been careless or if this was fucked from the beginning, but I looked at it, and I couldn't figure it out right. First glance, I didn't see anything. Um, it was getting voltage. Fuse was good. Everything was good. I traced the voltage all the way down to here and noticed I didn't get anything on the switch, and I turned it around, and there was a big old crack right on the front. So I don't know how I missed that the first time I looked at the board, but I had to do pretty much the same thing where I had to uh, use some epoxy to glue all that on. And then what I gotta do is just repair all the traces that are broken. It's probably not nearly as bad as it seems. Um, some people might be like, oh, fuck that. But it's not really that difficult. There's not a whole lot in this area. It's it's honestly very doable. So it just takes a little bit of work and some precision. precision. So um, I don't know if I'm gonna do that tonight or not, but it should be working once I get it, to, I hope. Because again, I, I don't know if I caused that by um, being careless or not. Either way, I had no power when I opened it up. And if that's the cause, because there's no um, connection with the switch, that should be an easy fix. Anyway, that's the shit I got going on. I still got tons of other crap to work on that I haven't touched in forever and a day because I've just been busy and just haven't really cared too much. So anyway, I'm rambling. I appreciate y'all watching. Take it easy.